Hello everyone and welcome to part two of my top VST plugins. And what is today's plugin? Well, it's Artillery 2. Now it is by extreme coincidence that the second plugin that I am featuring is number two in the series whilst also being video number two. The first one was Glitch 2. This is Artillery 2. This is a coincidence. I'm not only going to be looking at plugins that are number two. You're just going to have to believe me. What is Artillery 2? It is a multi-effects plugin that you control via MIDI and it does all kinds of stuff. And the user interface is quite small for my big screen. So I'm probably going to have to zoom in right about now so that you can see everything. And I'll try and keep on top of that. This is absolutely one of the best plugins I think you could possibly buy. And it, I think despite being 10 years old, maybe even more, it is still incredibly useful, especially for performance. If you're someone who wants to go out into the into the real world with your Ableton set and blow everyone away with all kinds of like really intricate, crazy, improvised DSP, this is absolutely perfect. Um, in order to make it work, you have to route a MIDI track to the audio track that the plugin is on, which I have done already. So if I um, press keys on my MIDI keyboard now, you can see that uh, I'm triggering stuff. So actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, maybe make a clear preset. Somewhere in here, there is a uh, empty preset. Okay, so I've got everyone's favorite drum break here. So basically you just click somewhere on the keyboard or rather above it and it creates an empty slot. And you can map the slot out across multiple keys, which is nice, but I always uh, kind of like to just have it on one key. So once you've got your slot, you then go to your effect. So we'll start with granular. We'll go with just the straight up looper. So I believe that, okay, I've got that selected. So I just press the key on the keyboard and it starts looping. It's brilliant. But it doesn't stop there. We've obviously got all of these types of settings here. So we've got like different loop settings. That's good. Okay. And we've also got a quantize. We've got a quantize for when the key comes on. I like to go for somewhere between one over eight or one over four, depending on what kind of mood I'm in. I'll go with one over four for this video. Sweet. All right, already we're raving. Why don't I take like a copy of that and then go to the next key up and paste and then have just a slightly different one here, like a eighth note or something. Okay. So they work in series as you go up the keyboard. So if I activate this one and then this one, this one gets rooted to this one. It's brilliant. It's so good. Uh, <laughs> Okay, I'm going to take a copy of that one again and go to the next key up and paste it. And this one I'm going to have for sixteenths. This is a rabbit hole of huge proportions. All right, why don't we go to the next one up? Let's try a different effect. Let's try like, let's try, the, I, I like the granular ones. Let's go for uh, time stretch. Everyone likes that, don't they?
I'm having so much fun and I haven't even started. So we're not just uh, bound to turning on the effect and turning it off. Once we've turned on the, the effect, we can do all kinds of other stuff too. We can use these universal modulators. So why don't I apply a modulator to the grain size? Let's choose one. Let's choose an LFO. And let's say, well, let's just see what the, the default one is like. You can see it working there, look. Yeah. Let's go for a slightly faster one. Raving my tits off. Right, let's uh, let's let's just keep going. Oh, I'm having so much fun. Let's go for what about um, the step looper is good too. <clears throat> oh, pardon me. So the step looper is a looper, but it re-triggers the recording of the loop independently of the amount of the newly recorded loop that it loops. <laughs> Excuse me, I just need to guzzle a beer after all of that mouthful. <clears throat> So we can choose a size that it loops, but we can choose how often that it starts re-recording. So let's say, let's say one loop. All right. And then let's say we want a, I like the, the ones with the P, which I think are dotted. I don't know why they didn't just put a dot, but like P is, and I don't even know what the P means. Yeah. So you can like, you, you, because they all go in like series up the keyboard, then you can have these like loops that re-record and still use effects before that in the chain that then get newly recorded. So if I say went to like um, the B down here and went for a different type of effect, like let's go for the tonal delay. And then let's say that, um, let's use like a, an LFO, um, or maybe actually let's try velocity. So we can actually have a MIDI message. We can say, I, I think we can use velocity. Yeah. Okay. So maybe we can, let's turn the slope down and, um, we can, uh, affect the pitch of this tonal delay with the velocity at which we hit the keyboard. Let's try that. So now if we use that in conjunction with the step looper, we can get really like crazy stuff. stuff why don't we maybe try like some actually let's go down here and let's do like a kind of turntable -y, scratchy one there's i mostly use the granular effects there i find them the most exciting what have we got here uh the well the scratch looper we can actually just use the normal looper and change the oh no that's not the one i meant maybe it's the maybe it's the tonal looper yes we can change the direction here okay <laughs> So we can get like some really crazy stuff. We could maybe use like, um, let's use a, a random LFO. Yeah. Okay. Let's use an LFO for this one too. Goodness me. Which 
one's that time stretchy one. I want to ditch that. So yeah, there's all kinds of stuff, other stuff as well. There's like filters and things. Uh, okay, let's have a look for some filters. We've got like a multi-filter. This is always good stuff. So we can filter that. And apply an LFO to that. Great for jungle, break or glitch. You know, it's. I used to use this all the time. I used to use it all the time. I, 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 I less so these days, but that's because I don't do as many gigs as I used to. But back in the uh, sort of, you know, mid to late 2000s when I was kind of Z-list on the Bristol break call circuit, I used to whip this thing out and five people in the crowd used to go nuts. Good times. <laughs> You can find like these weird. <laughs> and you could loop a bit and hold it. And then everyone's got their hands in the air. Everyone's sweating their nips off, raving. Oh, there's a vocoder as well, which is absolutely. Where's the vocoder? Vocoder. I'm not really too sure. So we can, act, you know, what, you know what we can do. We can actually map the vocoder to an octave of the keyboard. But we need to, we need to tell it to do that. Uh, where do we do that? I believe. Well, at least I thought that that was what you could do, but suddenly I've kind of forgotten how to do that. Uh, it must be one of these. Is it the octave? No, not quite. Okay, I'm abandoning that. I'm abandoning the vocoder. But anyway, there's a vocoder in there. Let's have a look at some other stuff. There's like a, a turntable-y type thing. I mean, there's, a, there's an insane amount of things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of course, if you turn the quantize off, then it's just... It's whenever you whenever you do it. This is perfect for a keyboard. This is really good for a keyboard. And it's not so nice with pads. Um, with a keyboard and a mod wheel and a pitch wheel, you get loads of flexibility. Is there? I mean, it's just racing through here. Oh, yeah. So we've got like some phases, flanges, amplitude. What's the sync dumper? I, I have to explore it because it's got the word dump in it. Oh, it's interesting. I think it's like a kind of. What could it be? Oh, that's good. Oh. Oh, 
Where's it gone? <laughs> there are some reverbs too, and the reverbs are perfectly, perfectly fine. Um, let's, what key are we on? G. Let's have a, let's have a look at the, re what have we got? Filters, delays. Okay, we've got reverb, HQ, and reverb. Let's have a listen, listen to it. Oh, look, there's an envelope follower there on the size and the strength of the reverb. That's interesting. Look at that go. So as I release the key there, the, the uh, attack times and the release times are quantized. That's absolutely brilliant. Um, oh, and you can choose to toggle or gate the effects. There's just a lot of flexibility here. Oh my goodness me. That I really like that step blooper. It's really good. Um, oh, what else is there? I mean, there's just so much stuff. I'm not, I don't know what karaoke is. <laughs> what on earth could karaoke possibly be? <laughs> no idea. Well, what was this? This one retro. That was a bit depth, a bit crusher. but I was having a very nice time there getting like a huge amount of like mashup sounds out of what eight keys and you can fill up as many keys as you have on your keyboard so if you've got 127 keys on your keyboard you can put 127 effects on here and this the, you can't you probably won't be able to see the CPU because I'm zoomed in but it's currently on three percent which is really good for one instance of this thing um yeah I've always loved it what uh, what else is there there's a compressor. There's a compressor in here. It's just got everything that you need. What's this diffusion delay? Let's have a listen to that. That's nice. I like the release times on the delays. Pitcher, there's a pitch. Is this a pitch shifter? Scratch looper, pitch looper. I think we've kind of done all of these. Oh, there's a reverser. This is good. Okay, let's put the quantize on. I'm actually going to take a copy of this and put it up here. After our step bloopery one, where are we now? I'm lost. Oh, oh, it's because I it won't do it unless that there's an actual effect. There's nothing on there, so let's delete that one. And let's move this one to here. It won't do it if there's no effect on there. So you can like you can do an effect and then reverse it with the with, with the reverse effect further up the chain. What am I doing with? 
with this. It feels like there's a little bit of attack on there. Oh, it's because the X fades up. There we go. And you can see why, because there's just an insane amount of fun to be had. Anything I've not looked at? Modulation. Let's have a look at the Ring Deluxe. This is a Ring modulator, I think. Using a random step sequencer here with curves. Look at that. It's just brilliant. Look at all this stuff you can do. Oops. <laughs> oh dear, I've kind of ruined this. Yeah. better wind my neck in so there you go artillery 2 one of absolutely my favorite plugins and i uh, still continue to use it every now and again but i used to use it loads and loads especially for live just chuck it on your master track and uh, set up a midi keyboard save your presets you can save your presets and you can just have loads of fun screwing around and you just trigger effects they come on and off and you can feed one into the other and make all kinds of noise it's brilliant so there we go See you next time for part three. I wonder what it will be. Not something that is the third plugin of its type. I can't think of a plugin that is something number three, but we'll just have to see, won't we? Okay, see ya, bye.